Well, hello and welcome to Wellness Wednesday with me, Kathy Stevens. This is No Excuse Wednesday. Beginning of the year, time to get serious, right? So what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna talk about how to use something I call the 2190 rule to ensure that you reach your New Year's goals. All right, we talked about goal setting last week. If you didn't join me, it's probably up on YouTube. Hey, Ginny, we're just getting started. So my wellness tip is we're gonna use the 2190 rule to sharpen, laser in on those goals for the new year. First thing you need to do is set a SMART goal. Remember, specific, measurable, attainable, uh, relevant, and time-bound. Have you got those in your mind? Because we're starting today. Find one goal that you're gonna work on for the next 21 days, one health and fitness goal, okay? And then what I wanna do is we're gonna use what they call the 2190 rule. It states that it takes about 21 days to form a new habit, whether that's a healthy habit or an unhealthy habit, which hopefully we'll avoid the second. And then about 90 days to lock it in to where it's a true permanent lifestyle change. We wanna start with small goals. That's why we're gonna start with the 21, not the 90. That will hopefully happen naturally because you're gonna be so happy with yourself after the 21 days. What are some adherence tips? Because that is so key in establishing and reaching your goals. First of all, again, establish the SMART goal with proper pacing. And that's what we're gonna do over 21 days. Myself, you, the rest of the team, Dan and, De Dan and Debbie, we're all here to give you workout options almost every day of the week. I believe there is a workout every day of the week that you can do with us here on the 60 Up member um, uh, website. Now, we also wanna have visual reminders. That's a great adherence tip. Ta-da! Visual reminder. I made you this cool little chart and I posted it this morning up on the website, the 60 Up member website. I'd love, love, love for you to print these out. Why? Visual reminder on the refrigerator, wherever you go, you know that you are doing the 21 and done. All right? So this is your visual reminder. I'll show you how we're going to use this. Another ad adherence uh, tip is to have a backup plan because sometimes you do have to go away like I did last week. I was out of town. I knew I couldn't bring my board, but I brought my band and my red ball and I was able to share with you a great home workout without the board. So have that backup plan of what you can do in case you're not in your home environment. Record and reward your achievements. That's what this is all about, recording and rewarding. And then last but not least, see if you can get a friend to join you. If, you're, if you have someone in the house and there's two boards around, wonderful. If not, this is a great distance workout because you can have someone get a board and you both join in together and uh, plan to be here the same day and chat it up on the chat board. All right, so those are my adherence tips. Let's get back to my 21 and done. So we're gonna chart for three weeks. That's why you'll see starting today, boom, the six. The first thing you need to do is write your specific and measurable goal. Is it to have more endurance and be able to walk 20 minutes instead of 10 in the neighborhood? Is it to lose weight? Is it to increase your mobility with some type of measurement? Maybe you do a sit and reach test. I'll show you that at the end. And you wanna see improvement in that. Is it the ability to stand on one leg a little longer showing an improvement in balance? Make it specific write it in here. I'll give you some ways that we measure it throughout the class. All right. So that's number one. I'll give you to the end of today to fill that out. Okay. So find your goal. And then in each day, what I want you to also do is to log what you did. So, I mean, it could be as simple as I went for a 10 minute walk. It doesn't have to be a full workout. It could be, I did a set of uh, crunches and sit-ups on my own or sit-ups on my own, or push-ups, or any kind of a calisthenic, but write something down every day, even as simple as stretching, stretching exercise, or breathing exercise, and of course, if you do the 60 up workouts with us, log that in too. We'd like to see what you're doing for 21 days. Commit to it. Then, the next thing I want you to do is each day, if you can, write, a, or, or I'm sorry, not each day, each Wednesday, I was getting a little aggressive there, write down a reason. Why is it you're doing this? Something that makes you really put meaning behind this goal. Something that makes it relevant to you. So every Wednesday, why? 
Why? Make it heartfelt. Make it meaningful, okay? I want to be able to hang out and play with my grandkids and not be exhausted at the end of the uh, day. Whatever it is. I know there's not a lot of space here, so you can use the back side as well. Now, and last but not least, on Sundays, put in a reward. Write in what you're going to do for the great work you did that week because we know rewards work. Remember, that's part of the adherence tips is to record and reward. That reward can be intrinsic. It doesn't have to be, I'm going to buy myself a new workout outfit. Not that that wouldn't be a great reward. It could just be, you know, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back and tell myself mentally how good I'm doing, how good I'm feeling. Do a mantra that day for yourself. Sometimes that's all the reward we need is a little self-recognition. So whether it's a real reward, like, hey, I guess I'll have that dessert today, or I will rent that movie, or I will go visit with that friend with my mask on, of course. You know, find something and write it down on Sunday so that you recognize it. And so this is our 21 and done challenge. I hope you're going to all join me. I'm going to be checking in every single Wednesday to see how we're doing. I'd love to hear what some of your goals are. And of course, at the end, some of your results. Okay, so let me check in and then we'll talk about this workout because we got to get moving, don't we? Hey, Joe, thank you for being here. Ken, as always, Pat, Chad. Wow, welcome. Nice to meet you. Good morning, Jen. Now, I'm not going to scroll all the way down because then I don't want to mess up my camera. I'm on my phone. If I push it, then I might throw the whole thing off a of board or balance and I don't want to do that. Not that we're not going to be working a little off balance. That's the purpose. But let's talk about this workout. It's 21 and done. That means we're going to do what I call the 777 format. What does that mean? We're going to do seven minutes of endurance work. That's to uh, work the heart. Maybe your goal is to build endurance. All right. Then we're going to do seven minutes of strength and stability for muscles. Maybe your goal is to be able to lift your own groceries or um, be able to hold your new infant grandchild, whatever it is, we're going to be working for seven minutes on strength and then we're going to do seven minutes of mobility. We need to increase our range of motion. That's for feel good. That's for function. That's for good form and flexibility. That adds up to 21 minutes and then we'll be done. So isn't that exciting? 21 and done. You know where you're going with this. I know where we're going with this and I will lead you through this. A couple of reminders. You will need your board. You're also going to need your short tubes hooked onto the outside uh, notches. So if you don't have that done right now, go ahead as I'm talking and start to loop those in. And if you don't have bands or you prefer not to work with bands, you can use a, a dumbbell or a water bottle because the movements can be done even just with the weight of your arm. I don't want anybody to feel like they can't do it because they don't want to strap or, or loop that um, tubing in. The tubing is great, so do it if you can. And then you're gonna need water, of course. So I have my water nearby off to the side so that we can hydrate up. We've talked a lot about that. And then I also have my clock to the side because 777 might be more like 9, 10, 11 if I can't watch my clock. So you know I'm on target with you, okay? Staying honest. All right, so this is where we're going and uh, we should have fun. We've got a lot of time at the end, after the 21 minutes of solid training, then we will do a really nice mind-body stress-reducing relaxation session. So we start with a warm-up, we end with a warm-down. And for that, you may want to have a chair nearby. I like you to have a chair nearby anyway because sometimes, you know, you just get fatigued. It's one of those days and I'd rather you know that there's something right off to the side or right behind you without you um, being so close to it that you might hit it with your leg, that you can sit down and take your own mini break because it is very key to take your own mini breaks when you need to in any training program. All right, that's the way to progress. Listen to your body, respond to what it's telling you. All right, so with that, I'm going to put a little background beat on because I'm that kind of a gal. Got to have the beat to keep me on target. And then we will get started with our warm up. So while I'm getting the beat ready, please put your uh, tubing in and get yourself set up for success. All right, here we go. All right, so hopefully the music doesn't get too loud. I will check in and somebody let me know if it is. Let's start by standing behind the board, 
hands up on your poles, and let's just roll those shoulders up, back, and around. Let's just start loosening up those joints, head to toe. Here we go. Roll those shoulders. Inhale and exhale. Have a comfortable stance. That's usually about shoulder width distance. Keep rolling. That's nice. And now the head and shoulders are going to just round over and down. Right here. Chin drops. Goes from one shoulder to the next. Loosen up that neck. Couple more. Last one. Bring it back to the center. And now let's lift up onto the toes and rock back to the heels. So toes up, heels back. Nice. Deep breath. Now I know you can't probably see my feet too well, so let me back up a little so you can see that I'm lifting my toes and then rising up. Lifting my toes and rising up. Keep going. This is really good to warm up those ankles and stretch those calf muscles. I'm letting my hips lead the movement. So again, watch the hips, make sure they lead. I know, I was in dance class yesterday, which was awesome. He was really trying to get you to activate and lead with the hips. Nice, you've got this. Now stay back and just bend the knees and extend the knees. So my hips are back and I'm just focusing in on that knee joint. My hands are on the pole supporting my spine. Head is up. Sternum is lifted, four more, three more. Tighten those muscles around the thighs, around the thigh bone. Last one. Now from here, stand tall again, and then let's go forward and roll through. This is gonna loosen and limber that spine for you. Feel free to keep the knees a little bit bent. Feel that stretch down the back side of the body. Take your time on this, no hurry. Inhale and exhale. I love these, let's do a few more. Last one. Stand up tall. Nice, now walk in place, just walk. Nice and light. Chin and chest up, head high. Get those feet moving. Keep your posture tall. Let's take the hands and stretch the fingers and hold in. Out and in. Out and in. Out and in. Four. Three. Starting a nice light heart pump. All right, now tap side. Tap in. Tap in. Just waking the body up to weight transfer from two feet one, kick stand on the side. Chest up, chin up. Two more. All right, now we're going to tap on board. Tap, drop. Again, just getting that brain and body ready for a little bit of that unstable surface that we work with. Now, one thing I failed to mention is although we're working endurance, strength, flexibility, because of this great apparatus, balance, proprioception, and agility are gonna come along with anything we do. So even just here, tapping the twos, crossing the midline, and then start to tap the threes. Nice, keep your chin and chest up. Then let's go back to the twos. Getting your body and brain ready for this. Warming it up. And back to the center line. Red line tap. Now let's take and tap the heel instead of the toe. Because remember, a lot of getting up and down on that board means being able to lift those toes up by flexing at the ankle. Let's cross it to the two. Stand tall. Still tapping the heel every time. Heel, heel, and if you can reach all the way over to the three, I know that's more difficult. Take your time, don't be in a hurry. 
Keep that chest up, keep that chin up. Back to the twos. And back to the ones. You can look down occasionally, but try for the most part to keep your chin up and your vision forward. Back to the straight line, red line in the center. Nice. Four more times, four and three and two and last one. Now feet together, pound the heels up and down. Now as you're pounding or letting the heels drop to the ground, zip up the muscles of your pelvic floor and abdominal wall. Keep pounding, soft drop, soft drop, waking up those bones. Keep going. Chin up, chest up. That's nice. In four, three, two, one. Now from here, we're just gonna go back to a march. Marching. All right, we're ready. Let's get that first minute of cardio going. March in place, holding. Hands on poles. Lift those knees a little higher if you can. Remember, we've got seven minutes of endurance. First move is a simple march behind your board. Chin up, chest up. Wiggle your fingers occasionally. Let's get that heart rate up. Now, one sign of endurance is when your heart rate doesn't race quite so fast or so hard easily. So one thing you might start to notice is that you can do more without becoming winded or breathless. All right, we're wrapping around to the minute. Almost there. March, 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 chin up, chest up. Spine tall, imaginary string pulling you up to the ceiling. Good. All right, minute two. Step, right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. So here we're just gonna do a nice conscious step up. And yes, the board will rock right, left, down, down. Here we go. Now, if you want to pace up a little bit here, you feel comfortable going a little faster with your basic step, feel free. Right lead, left, right down, left down. Keep that chest up. See if you can do this without having to keep your vision down. You can glance down, but then try to bring it right back up. A minute of basic, you've got this. You should feel that heart rate gently elevating into what we call a training zone. That's somewhere about a five on a scale of one to 10, 10 being breathless, one being resting. So just moderate, moderate, five or six. Chin up, chest up. I'm watching my clock, it's the end of the minute. So step down, now we'll do an alternating knee. So step knee, step down, step knee, step down. Now this involves a little more balance as well. And I am stepping up right in the center. That's it, right in the center. That's great. Try to keep that board as centered as possible. Wiggle those fingers every once in a while. And if this is becoming too difficult, you can also do this on the floor by just taking two step backwards and then a knee up backwards and a knee up. You've got this. Nice work. Good, keep going. Up, we're almost there. Step up, step up. And that's the third minute down. Now, we're gonna lead left. So left leg, basic step. Our fourth minute is gonna be a repeat of the, third, of the uh, second minute. Good, keep going. Up, up, chest up, down, down. Lift, up, step, back. Beautiful. By now, hopefully all of you are feeling a little cardio kick in. Up, two, and down two. Good job. That's nice. Remember the board will bottom out slightly. You're stepping up to the one and the one. Keep it simple, climbing those steps, climbing that incline. 
Remember, that might be your goal, taking your walk up a notch by finding a little bit more challenging terrain. That's great. Whew, how many steps a day are you getting? Do you have a step counter? That would be another way to monitor or set a goal around cardio endurance. Try to up it by about 10%. All right, that's your fourth minute. So now let's just bend the knees a little bit. Let the heels drop. Keep going, we're gonna do heel drops now for 30 seconds. And then we're going to take it to a lunge forward for 30 seconds. Are you ready? Here we go. So we lunge up and down, up and down. Now this one is a little bit more powerful because you're bending that knee, your foot is hitting the red line, and you're powering yourself back or pushing back. You're gonna find that heart rate will peak here a little bit. It'll go up a little higher than those other moves especially if you get a good lunge going. Push back. Whew, remember, make it lighter or easier by just not putting so much weight into it if you're getting a little too breathless. Chin up, chest up, all right. Back to the heel drops. Whew, that's five minutes down, two to go. You can do this. 30 seconds of heel drops, and then we'll do that same lunging pattern starting with the opposite leg. Chest up, chin up. We've got this. All right, here we go. In and out, bend and press back. Bend and press back. This is your sixth minute, guys. Whew. Settle in, push it back. Settle in, push it back. Keep that chin up, keep that chest up. Keep a nice steady state going. Somewhere around a five or six on a scale of one to 10. These are all ways to measure how you're working, how hard you're working. Three more, two more, last one. And now we step on top for the seventh minute. We're gonna take it here out wide, step wide and just rock it out. Let's go. Find whatever stance is most comfortable for you to give me a nice aggressive rock side to side. Just push into the foot, bend the knees, keep the chin and chest up. Woo, we're getting there guys, come on. You can use your arms by pushing into the poles a little bit more as well, engaging more arm muscle, which engages more cardio. That's it, rock it out. We're getting there 15 minutes, or minutes, woo, 15 seconds to go. You can do this. Breathe, chin up, chest up. Push through those feet, we're almost there. Feel it through the outer and the inner edge of your foot in eight, seven, six, five, work hard, four, three, two, and one and done. All right, lean over to your right side, step back with your left. Shake it off and get some water. Seven done, seven to go. Woo, seven twice. Seven strength, seven mobility and flexibility. That is so excellent, you guys. Let me check in with you real quick and make sure we're all okay. All right, awesome. All right, you can do my workout later. That's great, Betsy. Okay, rest of you, let's get up and get ready for some strength training. Are you ready? Now, if you don't have your handles on again, remember, um, we're gonna step up first and just get in the center, two and two. We're gonna grab, let's start with the right. Let's grab the right handle. We're going to put the feet on two and two and we're gonna start with a minute of squats, sitting back to bicep curl on the up. Right arm only, here we go, ready? Watching my clock. Squat, up, curl, down. Squat, now try to stay centered as much as you can. And remember, if you don't wanna use the tubing, you can use a dumbbell, water bottle, whatever you want. Or just do the squat and the curl with just some mind contraction, meaning think about tightening the muscle mentally as you go through the range. Sit back, try to get those hips as level as you can. Feel that strength coming out of the hips. 
into the arm. And if you want, you can start combining them so it's a little more fluid. So notice when I combine, my arm goes down while my legs are bending. Keep a nice strong core, meaning don't allow your head to drop or your spine to round. You really want to sit back with a nice long line. I call it the strong line of the spine. Woo! One more. Excellent. You got that. Okay, so rock it out a little bit for me. And then let's turn to the side. For the second minute, we're going to do a bent over row with a little bit of a lunge. So find your balance in, in the center position and then bend your knees and pull the elbow back. Bend your knees and pull the elbow back. So notice how my body comes a little forward and then stands up. But I'm not rounding, I'm not dropping my chin. And my legs are having to really work to try to keep that board as balanced as possible. And it does rock forward and back a little, that's okay. Keep going, bend and pull, bend and pull. Just watching my clock over there. We got about 10 seconds more on this side. Whew, beautiful. Keep going. Lunge and row, last one. All right, now step the feet together. Feet together, you're on the end. You're bottomed out to the right. I don't know if you can see me that well. Bring the tube up high with one arm and give me a deadlift as you bend over. I'm gonna back up so you can see me better, okay? So you hinge at the hip, and then you just push the hips forward. Again, learning how to engage those larger muscles of the hips. You wanna be forward so you get a little more direct line of pull for those hip and thigh muscles. So stepping on the front end is a little better on this one. Try to keep the tubing up by your chest. Bend over without rounding. If you're feeling this in your lower back, you're probably not stabilizing your spine enough on the way down. This should be felt in the hamstrings and the buttocks. How are we doing on time? We got five seconds to go. Number three. Beautiful. Last two. Last one. Excellent. All right. Go ahead and hook that up and turn slowly to the front. Grab the other one. And let's come to our squat position. Here we go. Squat and curl. Now remember, I started this kind of separate. So you do the legs first and then the arm. But you can also make it a little more fluid so that legs and arms are timed or tempoed together. Sit back into your hips, pull up. Sit back into your hips, pull up. Work really hard to keep the shift of weight going behind you, like you're gonna sit on a chair. Keep that chest up, you've got this. Very nice. Up, down, working those biceps, working your core, working your hips and thighs. Excellent. Couple more. Almost. Last one. All right, so now we have to lean over to the left, pivot turn, step back with one foot for the row. Back leg is back, down and up. So we're bending both knees. Now you can try to balance it. That's gonna make it tougher, or you can ground it out on the front if you want. Your choice. Bend both knees, row with the arm. You've got this. Beautiful. Keep going. Nice work. Keep that chin up, keep that chest up. Beautiful. Lunge and row, lunge and row. Whew. About 10 more seconds to go on this move. Excellent. Four more. Three. Two. Last one, step forward into that deadlift, hold the band up high, flex from the hip. So we've got a lot of bicep, a lot of hip and thigh. Nice, bending over and lifting. You've got this. Inhale and exhale. 
Inhale and exhale. By thinking about tightening the buttocks muscle as you unhinge, you're going to feel contraction in the shoulder and in the bicep on the side you're holding. Sit back, pull under. Keep going and remember to maintain that long line from head to hip through the spine, solid and tight. Excellent. Ten more seconds. Whew. You've got this. Beautiful. Last one. And step forward. Back to the center. Take your time. Pivot around. All right, now we got one more to go, okay? So I want you to work those triceps. So we're going to kick back with the palm forward. And we're going to do 30 seconds on one side. You're in a squat and 30 seconds on the other. We did a lot of bicep work. This will catch the back of the shoulder. So here's my body position. I'm leaning forward, long and strong. I've got my elbow up high. And then that lower arm is just extending and bending. You can turn in this direction. That gives you a better line of pull as well. That's it. You've got this game. All right. Let's go to the other side. Same thing. Lean into it. Lift your elbow. You can bottom out your board. Out and in. Now make sure you don't keep your head up all the time. If that feels a lot, of, uh, creates a lot of tension at the neck, keep a long line all the way to the top of the head. Keep that elbow high. Squeeze back. Come on. Work those triceps. Work those posterior deltoids. You've got this. We're only doing 30 seconds because this is a smaller muscle group. And so it's going to get nice and tired. Here we go. Squeeze out. Last two. Last one. Awesome. Unhinge. Hook that up. Hit it to the front. Ground it out. Step back. And let's get some water. Whew. Two thirds done. All right, remember, 777. We're now on to what should feel really good. Mobility, balance, that's involved anytime we're on the board, and then also some flexibility. Okay, <clears throat> for this next one, you're not gonna need your tubing. We're gonna step up onto the board, and we're gonna gently turn to face side. Now right away, your board's gonna rock a little, so get comfortable and you can either challenge your balance by doing the next series in the center or you can make it easier by scooting forward and being more grounded. The first move is a hip circle. We'll start right here. So it's just going to go around and out. Let me, I'm going to face the front so you can see what it looks like from the front, but you stay at the side. The reason I have you at the side is so that you don't hit the pole as it comes around. I want you to really think about tightening and engaging this side, the stability leg. So you're balancing, you're stabilizing, and you're mobilizing. Who could ask for more? Chest up, chin up. You've got this, keep going. Around, stir it in the pot. Keep that core engaged. Try to make it bigger if you can. Reverse it, bring it around the other direction. You know, you have to be able to get this motion down when you're on the floor and you want to get up because you have to slide that leg around to the front. So this is an important functional mobility exercise for everyone. Maybe that's your goal, getting up and down off the floor. I would love that goal. If you don't know how to do it or you can't do it, let's give it 21 days and I'll bet we'll get you to it. All right, ah, bring it down and ease it out, ease it out. That minute went a little long, sorry. Next one is going to be opposite arm leg reach. So we're gonna take the leg that's closest to me, not the one you, the one you were standing on, the arm that's furthest from me, the back arm, and we're just gonna reach and tilt, and then come back. So what we're doing here is a lot of hip hinge and mobility through the leg, a lot of stability through the core. So try to keep that arm alongside the knee, or not the knee, the ear. And then kind of teeter-totter, the standing leg can be a little bit bent. 
Try to form that nice scale, that nice line. It doesn't have to go too high. Again, you might want to be grounded forward on your board to make it more challenging. Obviously, the center is going to do that. But that's really hard. Last one. Bring it up. Shake it off. Woo, that was good. Now, come to the front. Just turn slowly. Put your feet on two and two. The next one is going to be the good old reach and lift. hinge and reach. So we're going to hinge at the hip. We're going to take and reach the arm, press it up, and then bring it back and unhinge. Do it the other side. Hinge, reach the arm, palm up, press it up, bring it down and back, unhinge. So hinge, reach, lift. Now as I lift that arm, I want you to notice my back doesn't change position. I reach and I stabilize that forward hinged position. Down, reach, lift, and recover. Again, flat back, arm, lift, and recover. Woo, one more on each side. This is so great for the shoulder girdle, for shoulder mobility, for the hips, for the balance. Awesome. All right, so after that one, I'm going to give you an easy one. Come forward and just round the back and push forward. So just hold onto your poles carefully. Push the chest through, round away. Push through, round away. Let me show you from the side, keep going. So all I'm doing is pushing and rounding. So it's basically a cat back to a cobra, a little arch there. Keep going, we got a full minute mobilizing both directions of the spine. Extension, flexion. Extension, now it is made a little more difficult because you are balancing at the same time, right? So don't underestimate these moves as being only about flexibility or mobility. We are reactively having to work our neuromuscular system to control and balance our body just by being on the 60 up board. So anytime these get too tough, get off the 60 up board and do it on the floor without the board. All right, stand tall. Oh boy, that was good. Turn to the other side. Now gently bring it around to the other side. You've got this. Stand up nice and tall. Oh, twist out the spine a little bit, just for fun. And twist the other side. That's just an in-between because I really felt that one. Hip circles this side. Bring it around. Remember, on the hip circle, you start with the outward circle. You tighten up that hip you're standing on. You can stay forward on your board to ground you, or you can back up and work a little more the balance factor for more advanced students who want to challenge themselves. Maybe we'll wait and build into that challenge as we go over the 21 day program. All right, let's reverse that circle. Wonderful. Whew. You got this. I'm gonna look at my clock real quick. Okay, we're all right with this. Circle in the other direction. Be tall, be strong. Keep your chin parallel to the floor. Your abdominals held in. Do two more. Last one. And put the feet together. Now, we're going to stand on the back leg, the one that's further away from me. We're going to put the one closer behind you. We're going to do the opposite arm leg reach, teeter-totter. Up. And back. Nice. Keep a nice control in both directions. Pull your abdominal wall up. Tighten your gluteus. Try to keep that arm right alongside your ear. Your standing leg can be a little bent. Oh, a lot going on here, guys. Not only mobility, stability, and core strength. Beautiful. Keep it going. Excellent. Be strong. Be sturdy. Keep going. I'm watching my clock here. We've got 15 more seconds to go. Inhale and exhale. Good. 
This is our sixth minute. We have one more to do. Two more. Last one. All right. Now put your feet down in the center and again, ease yourself to the front. Awesome. All right, now rock and lift. So what do I want? I want you to try to peel, and you can find the, maybe the two to two position of the feet. Lean back and pick your toe up. So see how my hip is shifting as well? As I let my hip jut, that allows my foot to come up. I'm really working on that ankle mobility here. A lot of you tell us about problems with neuropathy and drop foot. Those are two common ones. And so the more you can do, even if initially it feels like it's not working, you're still thinking it through. And that might be your goal. Get those toes up and work those muscles. Ooh, don't forget to breathe throughout. Inhale and exhale. You've got this. Seven, seven, seven. We're rounding it off with the last minute for those lower legs. Then we get that nice cool down that I promised to finish off. Not just strong, but healthy. Sometimes we forget how important it is to de-stress, to release and to relax. Good job, keep going. Two more. Last one. Awesome, okay, let's ground out, step back, get some water, grab your chair. We are ready now to slow it down, relax and release it. Awesome, guys. Whew, a little change of pace here. Time to release. Excellent job, everyone. Hydrate more as well. So important for our body. Three to five gulps. That should do it. Okay, so we're going to come on to our chair. I'm going to use a stool today just because it's simple. We're going to sit down. We're just going to relax. Let the weight of your body just simply relax. I'm going to turn my music down a little bit so that you can really focus in on my mental cues and my relaxation cues. All right. So I want you to sit down and if you have a chair with a back on it, go ahead and rest back into the back of the chair. And then I want you to take your head and let it just move from right shoulder to left or left to right, right to left. Nice and loose, nice and light, hands on thighs. Ringing out the old year, <laughs> ringing in the new year. Let's say bringing out the old year. And now I want you to continue with this, but I want you to look behind you and up to the ceiling behind you, to the right and to the left. So take that little extra rotation second to get and twist and look with your eyes, stretching the eyes in the eyeball sockets, down and around. Couple more. Last one to the right, last one to the left, and then bring the head back to the center. Now we're gonna bring the knees together for balance. We're gonna let one arm come up, and we're gonna reach over, crescent to the side, and then twist like you're putting the light bulb in over your head. Have your other hand either on your chair or your thigh. Inhale and exhale through the nose for the inhale, through the mouth and nose through the, for the exhale. Now take that arm straight up, reach it to the ceiling like it's being tractioned out of your shoulder, and then let it slide down the front. 
Let's start that same process on the other arm. So reach up, press it over. Feel that nice lengthening stretch down your back muscles. Make sure your other hand is grounded on your thigh or your chair. Inhale and exhale, twist, and let's put that light bulb in and out. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. I don't know how many times I've used that when screwing something in. Otherwise I forget. Keep breathing, inhale and exhale. And then bring it overhead and traction it up, just like someone was pulling it out of the arm socket. You can even use your other hand to help. And then slowly melt it down. Release to the thighs. Good job. Now, from here, we're gonna take one leg up. We're gonna cross it over. Now, for those of you that have had any kind of hip injury or surgery or chronic problem, if this is too much, then know you can just cross at the ankle. All right? Always wanna have those modifications in your hip pocket, literally in your hip pocket. Here we go. We're gonna lean in and then we're gonna roll back. And I want you to think like you're rowing a boat. Inhale. Exhale. Allow your spine and your neck and your head to all contribute to the rowing action. Feel that blood pump. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Last one. Now, I promised you a measurement for flexibility. Here it comes. So placing your foot out in front of you on the floor. At the hip, hinge forward and see how far down you can reach while touching your leg. Shin, ankle, toe. Remember in your mind where you're at with comfort without too much pain. Just you wanna have a little stretching sensation. Mark it in your mind and let's hope that at the end of 21 days, you can get a little notch further, maybe goal being getting to your toe without too much rounding in the back. Okay, let's bring it up. Let's circle it around. And then let's switch sides. So the other leg is gonna come either up onto your thigh or down at your ankle, whatever feels best for you. And then from here, we're gonna do that rounding or rolling action with the spine. So we're gonna come forward with as flat a back as possible and then roll through with a nice, slow, controlled movement. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Very nice. Very important to keep the spine mobile like this. This is a move you can do anytime you find yourself seated for too long, maybe in front of the computer or the TV or on a car ride. It really does pump that synovial fluid through the spine and release some stagnant tension in those muscles. Last one. And then we're gonna measure the other side. So stick that leg out in front of you. You have to be on the edge of your chair. Reach down with both fingertips. Slide it as far as it'll go. Try not to go to a point of pain. Just stretching tension. And monitor or think about where did you make it? Shin, ankle, toe. Take a few deep breaths. And then gently climb back up your thigh, sitting nice and tall again. Now maybe scoot back a little so that you're resting on your chair. So imagine you could rest your back. I can't because I'm on a stool, but I'm imagining it. And then I want you to put your feet out in front of you comfortably, your arms out to the side. We are going to do the 2021 stress is done exercise. Are you ready to get rid of all your stress? So close your eyes gently and just stay there for a second. 
I want you to start with your feet. I want you to tighten the muscles in your feet like you're scrunching your socks in your shoes. And then relax. And then I want you to tighten upward from the feet to the calves and into the thighs. Tight, 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 isometric. Hold it like you're clenching a fist. And then relax. Let them be jello. And now let's go to the hands. Clench your fists. It's an easy one. Hold that tension. And then melt and relax. And then let's take it up the arms. Tighten through the bicep, the forearm, into the shoulder girdle. Eyes are still closed and relaxed. And then again, release and relax. Now let's leave the limbs limp. And think about tightening your core. So pull up your pelvic floor. Imagine someone was going to punch in the stomach. Tighten across your chest. Hold that core box tension. Breathe but hold. And then relax. Melt it. And then let's come up to the neck and the face. Give it a scrunch. No one's watching. I'm only watching me. Scrunch it. And then melt and release it. Now go back and spot check. Make sure your feet are, are loose, your legs are loose, your arms and hands, your core, your neck, your face, your scalp, and just breathe. Inhale real deep through your nose. Exhale fully through your mouth and nose. Keep your eyes soft or closed. Inhale again, fill it up. Imagine you're filling up a water bottle or a water balloon. And then exhale and imagine you're letting all the air out, trying to push it out, like when you have to get the raft back in the box. Again, inhale, fill it up even deeper this time. Exhale. And then last time, take a nice deep breath. Inhale fully. Open up the lungs, open up the pores. Deeper, deeper, deeper. And then slowly exhale. And think about emptying or pushing that air out all the stress with all the things that we don't want to bring into 2021 and then resume normal breathing <clears throat> open your eyes and ta-da you have completed your first workout of the 21 and done challenge so you could just put kathy's workout in there and hopefully with a good reason to do this all right so i hope you guys will join me Remember, important to record and reward. Remember to pace yourself. So choose workouts that you feel comfortable with. Have visual reminders, have a backup plan, and employ this with a friend. So get someone else to join you. Okay, I'm gonna check in now because we're done, but I just wanna see who's here. And hi, so good to see you, Nick. And uh, Mona be working out later. Good. She always joins us a little later, but I'm glad to have her whatever time she can be here. Mary, excellent. I'm glad you're walking and that could be an in-between, a wonderful in-between workout. Uh, oh, you hit the second button. Betsy, that's okay. Catch me on YouTube or later on this exact website because, you know, you can do this workout anytime from the website or from YouTube. So the main thing I want you guys to do is to really try to do the 21 and done challenge with me if you can. Print this out, just drag it from the website onto your desktop. <laughs> if not, I'll try to figure out a way to attach it for you. I know these are things that my mom has trouble with when I tell her, just do that. She's like, yeah, just do that. Tell me how. So yeah, if you're in Facebook and you see it, it you just take and copy or drag it onto your desktop. It'll be printable. It'll be a printable thing that you can, that's not the chart, That's. It'll be a printable thing that you can do. Um, 
And if not, let me know and I'll try to get it to you by email. So that would be another thing you could do. Say, Kathy, email this to me and give me your email address and I'll do that for you. But I would love to see some of your measurable, specific goals. Make sure they're attainable. Make sure they're relevant. And of course, we're making them time bound. 21 days and done. I hope you liked this workout. I will stick with this 777 for the next, um, let's see, three weeks till we get 21 and done. And then that will uh, give you something to prepare for. It won't be the same moves, but we'll still do the seven minutes of endurance, the seven minutes of strength, and the seven minutes of uh, mobility and flexibility work and a great cool down, uh, which is what I love to be able to get to. And we had plenty of time. I think we probably finished before the hour. So that's another nice thing is we, we're getting really efficient with this as well. So thank you again. Uh, so pleased to see you guys joining me and I hope that you'll continue through the 21 and done. Mwah. Signing off, 60 up.